Last week, we were able to get a basic plot of our radar data. This week, we're going to learn how to dress up that plot a little bit and create a geographic bounding box. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to start where we left off last week with a basic plot of our radar data and dress it up a little bit, adding things like timestamps, state outlines, and creating a geographic bounding box. Let's start with a color table. We're used to using a reflectivity color table that's pretty standard. So from MetPy.plots, import ctables. And we have a past MetPy Monday video on using color tables. So make sure to reference that if this seems new to you. We're going to get the norm and color map using the get with steps method here. So we want to get the NWS reflectivity color map. And we're going to start at a value of 16 dbz return, and we're going to step in values of 16 to get to the full uh, range of the data here. Now down here in our p color mesh plot, we say that we're going to use the norm and color map that we just retrieved. So now if we plot that data, we see that this is pretty much just clear air clutter here. Uh, nothing too interesting. There's no storms or anything going on right now. So unfortunately, it's not that interesting of a data set. I'm going to go ahead and insert a cell above here, because one thing that I'd like to add to this is a timestamp. And we don't want to hard code that. We don't want to try to parse the file name out. Uh, but we do need to figure out what metadata attached to this file contains the time and parse that into a date time object. So I'm going to print data dot, and just hit tab. You can go through here, look for something that would tell us the time. And here we go, time coverage start and time coverage end. You could pick either one of those, depending on whether you want to plot the start or end time of the sweep. I'm going to plot the start time. Now if I look at that, we see that it's a string in the ISO date time format but we're going to need a Python date time object. So I'm going to say data time is date time dot strp time. So that is string parse time. So we're going to parse a string into a date time object. We know that it is going to be time coverage start. And then we need to specify the format, which in this case is year-month-day, capital T, hour, minute, second, capital Z. Let's go ahead and print out data time to make sure we parsed it correctly. And we did. So now we can add to our imports down here the add timestamp functionality. And then we just call add timestamp with the axis and we specify that the time is data time. So now you see down here at the bottom of the figure, we have the volume scan start time on our figure. One thing we can do to dress it up a little bit is import add metpy logo. Then we can use that function down here. We need to tell it the figure that we want the logo on. And you see we get the logo on there. It's a little bit overlapping down here, but we can fix that. If you look at the defaults, you can specify an X and Y position. Y defaults to 25. So let's give that another five pixels of padding. Let's say Y equals 30. There, that looks a lot better. 
So another thing we might want to do is put some state borders on here. So we have an idea of where we are. So we're going to do this using Cartopie's natural earth feature. So we're going to go out, grab the natural earth data set for state borders, if it's not already cached on your system, and then plot it. Hopefully this is one of those things that will get easier in the future is right now it's a little verbose as we're going to see. Okay, so that will go and get the state borders for us. Now we just need to add that feature onto our map. So down here at the bottom, axis dot add feature state borders. We want the edge color to be black. Line width, let's set that to two. Z order of two. So that'll be even higher in the layer stack on the image here. Okay, and so you see we actually got an error back here. And several people are probably screaming at their screen that there's a typo. But this is one of those good opportunities to look at this whole long stack trace of errors. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, you see that what I end up getting is an HTTP 404 not found. And we see that up here towards the top, we were getting a warning that we were trying to download this file. So what happened is Cartopie went out to try to download the admin one states provines lakes. And obviously it's not going to find that because there's a misspelling in there. We're missing a C right there. But if we add the C in, now it's going to work and we get our map with state borders on it. That's one of those things where you might see that error and start pulling your hair out trying to figure out what's going on. It helps to go to the bottom, start looking and going back up that stack trace to try to figure out what happened, knowing that the error may not always point to exactly what really happened. It's not going to say you have a typo. Did you mean provinces? So being able to read those stack traces is one skill that just develops the more that you work with Python. The final thing that we're going to do to this map today is zoom in a little bit here on more of the, the region of this radar. We're pretty zoomed out right now. I don't need to see the Oklahoma panhandle. So that's done with set extent. And I'm going to specify a distance from the center of the radar in degrees for my extent. So distance in degrees, I'm gonna set it to about 1.8. And then we set the extent, so call set extent on axis. This expects X minimum, X maximum, Y minimum, Y maximum. So it's going to be data dot radar longitude minus our distance in degrees for X minimum. Go ahead and wrap this around. Data radar longitude plus distance in degrees. Data radar latitude minus distance in degrees. And finally, data radar latitude plus distance in degrees. Now, if we run that cell again, we see that we are zoomed in. We're just seeing the Northern Colorado border here. And we have our radar data plotted with our timestamp and our logo. So that's how to make a basic one panel plot of one time step. Next week, we're going to talk about how to loop through this and create animations for multiple time steps. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and give the video a thumbs up. You can also find us on Twitter, at MetPy and at Unidata, and go like the Unidata Facebook page to keep up with everything that's happening here in Boulder. Thank you for joining me on this week's MetPy Monday.